Let me tell you a story of an age long past. It is a story of loss, grief, hopelessness, and death, but also a story of great courage, power, and the meteoric rise of four destined souls, all intertwined by the strands of fate. Long ago, there was a resplendent dynasty led by the noble and kind Aranus family. The leader, Tethalor Aranus, was beloved by his people and brought a great prosperity to his nation for over 20 years. This growing wealth and adoration wasn't without a cost, unseen by the great Daimyo. A close friend and general of his, Shinji Shiro grew ever jealous of Tethalor. Like an infected wound, the hatred for his lord grew and grew until he came across a weapon of legend. The sword known simply as Virtue Eater found its way into Shiro's hands. With this legendary blade, Shiro led a revolt against Tethalor and his family. With the destruction of the Aranist dynasty, a new one rose from its ashes. The Shiro Shogunate now holds all the untold wealth and riches of the Aranus family. Despite the brutality of Shinji and his new dynasty, a seed of hope was able to escape the slaughter. Now a woman capable of her own great feats the last Aranus Scion finds herself drawn to three other destined souls. While the Aranus dynasty was still in power, they employed a great many slayers to deal with the necromantic and demonic incursions throughout the world. One such slayer went by the name Fangril Latheon, a legendary swordsman by his own right taking up the might and magic required to handle the demons in battle, elevated him to a level beyond most mere mortals. All slayers out in the world travel with an apprentice, typically the wayward sons and daughters of minor lords handle these positions as their enhanced bloodlines are capable of handling the power needed much easier. Fangril would eventually run into a unlikely apprentice in the slums of a small village at the foothills of the Itna Mountains. Purchasing a young elf named Ragnar, he would take him up as his apprentice. Eighteen years under Fangril, with many battles, adventures, and near-death experiences, Ragnar would be left fatherless in the world with the death of Fangril, slain by an unknown demon blade. Ragnar swears that he will discover the truth behind his father's death and destroy the demon blade for good. He stands with the potential of becoming one of the most powerful mortals in the lands, and his fate is drawn to three others. Far to the east of the Aranus dynasties were the peaceful lands of the Hethlin clan, a proud people that were capable fighters in their own rights. Within these lands lived a small family, the Mankin family, who were potters and statue makers. They were commissioned to craft a grand statue of the Hethlin clan patriarch for the village. The family decided to be quite ostentatious and had crafted the statue from solid gold. This drew the eye of many fledgling nobles and bandits alike, as the statue was said to be worth a lot. During one fateful night, as a young Highland mankin was to propose to his bride-to-be, a group of bandits raised the village. Despite the impressive defense made by the village, it would ultimately end in the destruction of their homes and the death of many as well as the loss of the statue. Among the fallen was the lover of Highland, who from that moment swore a vow to end all injustice in the world that he could find. Taking up the powers of dark arts, he 
he would see to it that his mission be done. And until he had done so, he would refuse to take any lovers. A seemingly simple life was one way to describe that of the Maluna family. They owned and ran several rice farms, and with that rice they brewed sake for many noble houses and taverns alike to enjoy. Thus this was the day-to-day -day monotonum of everyone within the Maluna house, at least on the surface. Only a few in the world knew of their secrets and employed the members of their family for jobs where discretion was important. A young Solithra was in line to learn the secrets of their family. However, their impatience and wanderlust caught the better of them. Running away from home, they took up the life of a ranger and adventurer when they were young, at about the age of twelve. The world, as they would learn, could be quite harsh forcing many difficult decisions for survival. Despite the hardships, Solithra would eventually find themselves flourishing. Fate would lead Solithra to staunch allies that were fierce and trustworthy. As the four heroes eventually crossed paths, they would start to take up small jobs here and there to make ends meet. Even as a year passed and they continued to travel and fight with one another, they still hold fast on the many personal secrets. Despite this, all of them consider each other close comrades and friends. As fate would have it, a job would bring them to a dilapidated old fortress nestled safely within the hills of the Viria Forest. This is where the tale truly begins. Good day, and welcome back to uh, Arclight Legends. Hopefully everybody enjoyed that little intro sequence. I decided to kind of refine it a little bit more from the Rim DeLorean series. Um, I don't know if it's going to have as many uh, quote-unquote moving parts as far as um, like the videos and the GIFs in the background goes. I'm going to take a kind of different approach with it on this series um but i'm i'm hoping that it's more refined and i have custom art for three quarters of the main characters here um this is all art that i've commissioned throughout the years so uh, i i own them and uh, you'll be seeing a lot more of those in this series. And perhaps moving forward in future series, I'll be doing something kind of similar with those. Just to give it a little bit of a uh, personal touch. Or an Arclight Legends touch, we might consider it. Um, but that aside, the Rim DeLorean will still be going on. It's um, probably going to be a weekly video, and this will be a weekly video as well. Uh, I'll be running two series. I got a method here that should allow me to swap between both mod packs without an issue by using uh, RimPy. Um, now, that aside, this mod list is probably about 450 mods. I believe it's bigger than the Star Wars mod list, but through my testing that I did the other day, I spent probably about, I don't know, four hours testing. I didn't have any real performance issues with the game. Uh, unlike the Star Wars mod pack where things kind of lag a little bit. Um, so I definitely think I am narrowing down on the cause of the lag in that one. So I'll probably be stripping a couple of mods from that series, which will be a little unfortunate. But, you know, at the end of the day, we want um, smoother gameplay, not a laggy mess. Now, we are continuing to use Rim War as well as Empire in this playthrough. Um, but the kind of main focal point of this playthrough is going to be the Rimworld magic as well as keeping things on a medieval level, as well as kind of a fantasy style. I shouldn't say kind of, very fantasy style. Um, 
the uh, world building that I did at the intro there, uh, I spent a few hours just, I had generated the planet, considered what was going on, and I had already pre-wrote the characters' backstories. Um, and it was really just me kind of figuring out how this world fits in with their stories. Um, as you can see, we are nestled here in some of the foothills of the Varia Fortress, forest, not fortress. Um, up here is the Itna Mountains, which is where our uh, Ragnar character is from. Over here to the east is where Hyland is from. Um, since the town was destroyed, there's probably some ruins out here for it. Um, but it definitely is probably somewhere in this area. As far as Cell's home goes, uh, they still exist. They still exist. As far as where that's from, that's, well, a mystery that we will solve throughout the series. Um, and then Tylera, as the last Aranus House member, well, her homes were all destroyed. Um... Specifically by the Shiro Shogunate. Um, Shinji Shiro was a trusted family friend that, well, betrayed everything for the wealth and power. Now, our goal this playthrough is to destroy the Shiro Shogunate. We have already sparked the ire of them, and there's good reason for that. Um, as she is the last remaining Aranus heir, or heiress, she does have claim to all of the stolen goods and power of that dynasty, painting a pretty big target on her back. Now, while they were adventuring and traveling, she did go by a different name, um, but as things do, everything changed when uh, she decided to take up this uh, mission and the other three decided to join her in uh, handling this. Now, there's no quote-unquote main character or anything of that nature. Um, all of them have pretty interesting stories and we will hopefully be able to settle all four of their stories. Um throughout the uh, series they're tied together a little more closely than one might think so here's our map here is the fortress that we will own um, I did a little bit of pre-work on it j mostly just to um, get some of the wood chopped and everything and it was like in this mountain so I kind of dug it out a little bit using some uh, dev tools but other than that I haven't done anything else there's nothing crazy on the map I don't think um, another mod that we will be using in this playthrough is the dragon's descent um, I don't know if we have any dragons on the map right now that's what I'm kind of taking a look for I don't think we do probably probably not I don't think we are that fortunate or unfortunate but that is always able to change now the dragon's descent mod is technically in beta testing it's not released for 1.3 yet so I am well beta testing it um, as far as how long the series is gonna run I, I'm not sure I think it will probably be about the same amount of time as the Star Wars one. I don't see any reason why it wouldn't be. Let me make sure I got this lined up correctly. There we go. Of course, we got to do a little bit of repairs on this castle. That's quite all right. Um, 
yeah. So let's go over these characters really quick while they work. Ragnar, where are you at? This is Ragnar. Um, he is strong of heart. That just increases his virtue chance. Um, as he was a, you know, adventurer and the apprentice of a slayer, as you will see here, he uh, very much so became strong of heart because of that. Uh, his next thing is he is a lightning swordsman. Really, this has nothing to do with using the element of lightning in his attacks. It's more that he's just very swift with his attacks. Um, he's got a 12 in melee, so he's an expert. Um, 8 in shooting, he's pretty good at it. He's also... Uh, Pretty good at crafting. He's a very middle-of-the-road character, uh, as I typically start with very middle-of-the-road characters. Where's our food? Hang on a second. Did somebody leave the food? Seriously? You're harvesting an oak tree. You are hauling granite blocks to blueprint. You're harvesting a poplar tree. He's building... Um, can I have you... Prioritize hauling that, please. Thank you. Anyway, back to this. Um, yeah, so... He's also muscular. He's Achillean. There's a reason behind that that we will explain and discover as the story is told. And he's also brave. Um, kind of a similar setup to uh, Aegis in the other series. Um, but they are still two very different characters. Um, his class is a guardian which um, this is from cures expansion of the magic classes for Rimworld of magic it uses both might and magic I think of it kind of like from my testing and what I understand it's similar to a paladin but with a little bit of ice magic in there um, so we can just call him a uh, frost paladin probably and I already see a inconsistency in our building here. Awesome. Let's go ahead and deconstruct that wall there. Now, that's that's about what we got for Ragnar at the moment. Tylera, let's take a look at her. So, she was the daughter of a daimyo and is now the surviving heir. She is really strongly loaded in the medical, social, and intellectual side, as well as shooting. Uh, these are kind of her weaknesses. Um, not something she really had to worry about growing up, is learning about all that stuff. Um, she's also strong of heart, good-looking, energetic, and she's an academian. But furthermore, she's a black mage. She's a combat mage, which gives us access to all kinds of neat spells. Originally, I had her as a fire mage, but since we're using cures, um, I decided to use one of those classes for her. Because it seems to me that I haven't like balance tested them or anything. But it just feels like the Cures individuals are stronger as far as their classes go. And uh, I wanted to make sure our, at least our four heroes here are of similar power levels. Um, so she's got access to all the elemental spells, it looks like. Not all of them. There's actually quite a lot of spells. There's like 400 plus spells in this mod. It's kind of ridiculous, but... Um, hopefully, it's a pretty strong class. I want to avoid using fire as much as possible. Because <laughs> I don't want to light everything on fire. Especially with a medieval playthrough. It's going to be a lot harder to uh, deal with those. Um, Highland. Let's take a look at him. So, Highland 
somehow he owns a warg, but is incapable of animals. Don't ask me. That's just peak Rimworld right there. Um, so he's a glutton. He likes to eat. He's inquisitive. He's nimble and a hard worker. You can see that he's very uh, middle of the road as well for most things. Um, he should have a higher artistic skill than a six, but, well, it's one of those skills that if you don't use it, it's going to kind of go away over time. Sort of like math. Let's get a grow zone going real quick before we continue with these characters. Nice little uh, seven by seven plot of rice would be great. Come on, uh, ba -ba -ba rice. There we go. I guess I should set their schedules. We'll do a typical kind of schedule with uh, that. Excellent. And then let's. What am I looking for? I'm looking for this. Let me just make sure... Okay. I did a little bit of tweaks off-screen before I even started. Just to get kind of the basic stuff out of the way. Clearly I missed some things. Um, so, back to Highland here. Um, his class is a Shadowbringer. He was originally just the Samurai class, but again, same deal with uh, Tylera. I decided to use one of Cure's classes just to uh, ensure that they're all using the same mod pack for their classes. Um, I've never played with this class, and it should be pretty interesting to see. Um, it looks like it's melee oriented, and it uses the power of darkness to annihilate his foes. There's another Might and Magic class. Seems to me that it's kind of like the um, Dark Knight from Final Fantasy XIV. I think that's the class name. I think Cure's classes are very much inspired by the Final Fantasy classes. So, we'll see how this ends up playing because he's got a lot of options oh crap I was dropping wood <laughs> um, and then Salithra let's take a look at her so she's a she was a farmer rice farmer's daughter uh, she's also strong of heart not bad looking and she is a pride stalker. This is kind of a classic uh, ranger type class where it's handling animals and an animal companion as well as um, shooting bows and arrows. Um, she can, they can uh, use shapeshift and things of that nature, uh, some polymorph as well as summoning animals so it's kind of like a ranger druid mix it should be pretty cool in my test it was a pretty strong class um, they soloed like two raids by themselves I say solo we use spirit wolves but it's all the same now as far as this map goes it looks like we have some caves which means we're going to have bugs to deal with, which is good. Those should be good early level things to uh, deal with and remove. Um, we got this cave up here. With some salt in it. We are using all medieval overhauls, so anything beyond uh, medieval tech level we won't be able to do. And we also have... S skins for the shuttles and things like that to make them not tech oriented the only <clears throat> excuse me the only thing that isn't the case as far as not being sci-fi would be the uh, cargo pods not much I can do about that 
it's a shame I can't like skin them to be wood crates. But uh, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. That's kind of where we're starting at. So I think for the moment, I'm gonna go ahead and um, focus on doing some off-screen building, and uh, we will come back once something of interest happens. So we'll see you shortly. Okay, we're back. Uh, a couple of things I figured I would talk about this now. Um, playing, if you haven't played a medieval style RimWorld campaign, it is far different than a normal RimWorld campaign. For instance, um, we don't want to cook as much. We kind of only want to keep enough food for what we need. Um, I believe, yeah, we're in a permanent summer, so we kind of lucked out on that front. But normally, if you did not have a summer uh, or a winter, if you did have a winter, it could be pretty difficult to manage your food, considering you don't really have a means of keeping things cool at the early stages. Um, there is ice that you can get with some certain mods and things of that nature so it is possible but um, you got to be a lot more I guess aware of what's going on let's see what what is a koku oh wow interesting um, another thing is we cannot just mine steel um let's see if i can find one but there will be iron veins yep right here iron veins around and you initially start with iron ingots um actually you start off with ore then you gotta smelt them into ingots and stuff like that um so there's additional steps to handling uh, the production of materials. We got a couple of tanning racks over here. And these tanning racks are what we use to turn hides from creatures that we hunt or kill into leather. Um, so it adds extra steps. Uh, it basically increases the kind of quote unquote realism of everything. So we got that to look forward to, and there are research options out there to kind of help us manage those whenever we uh, get around to dealing with them in a large scale. Um, another thing is, let me go to the options here. We're using Mifune Misfortune. Uh, I was going to use Maynard Medieval. But I decided to go with this guy. We're playing on Blood and Dust, so we should have a little more action based off of that, I'm hoping. Uh, but he prefers larger populations and tends to send allies to help. He doesn't like to create diseases as often, which, considering where we are, diseases aren't too much of an issue anyway. But I'm hoping that we get larger raids to deal with from this guy. So I suppose in time we will see. Um, but yeah, I figured I would do that quick little update, and I'll pop back around once we have something of interest and a note happening. So we're back. Um, looks like we got Ragnar and Tyler have decided to get together. So we will need a double bed for them, which works. Um, we have soft beds as a mod in this one, and it really changes how beds work. I like this one. Let's take a look. Walnut, birch. Let's slap down a birch one. So the thing with the beds now is they require a uh, bedding to be created. Otherwise you'll see it's just kind of the bed frame. Um, in order to do that I have a crafting spot right here and if we go down a bit, you will see that 
Okay, let me just search it. You'll see that we have the option to create um, bedding. We'll probably um, stick with fur for now because we don't have access to cloth. And in order to even make cloth, I think we need a couple of researches and um, like a spindle, I think it's called, to take the cotton and spindle it into actual, you know, thread and everything. So it will it will take some time before we get the comfortable stuff, but for now we can certainly deal with having a, um, I guess, bed frame and then uh, fur beds um, because we got some deer down here that we can hunt. Uh, we're going to send those away. Um, we are... Okay, sweet. We got rustic furniture. Um, we are going to build a full-on like medieval-styled village and town kind of centered around this castle. Um, it will take us some time to get there, but we're going to have like a little farmlands right here. Uh, then I'm thinking up in here we might have a couple of like the houses and such because we got this nice little lake by the uh, castle. I don't know if anybody's actually going to live in the castle or if we're going to make it the uh, kind of center of religion and whatnot. Um, that is yet to be seen. I will determine that a little bit later. I kind of, honestly, I kind of wish the castle was like right here so it had the lake up against it. Um, we might build a secondary castle over here or the manors for the heroes uh, perhaps um, but we still got a ways before we do that and then here we're definitely gonna put a hot spring in and we'll probably carve this mountain out a little bit looks like we got some coal here which will be helpful whenever we get around to uh, smelting ore um, but we're definitely going to build a sizable tavern and inn for our guests to stay once we get to that point. I don't know where what building I'm going to build first. Since they can all just kind of live in a castle right now. We don't really need any of them at the moment. But I am hoping uh, sooner than later. I could not decide if I wanted to say sooner or shortly there. So that's why that came out so weird. Um, hopefully soon though. We will start getting some uh, people. And it looks like we have an ancient danger right here. We might crack that open this episode if nothing cool happens in the next hour or so as I play. I guess we'll see. Um, Ragnar is currently working on a well here. Um, we got plenty of water up here. And really everywhere. It's a very watery map. But... Um, I figured the well would work well here, no pun intended, for the time being. Probably would have been better to stick it over here, but um, I don't know how my town plans are going to look just yet, so I'm throwing it down right here because I don't think I'm going to put anything right there off the top of my head. Because I could see us having a blacksmith here and then like a couple of farm homes over here. I suppose we'll see how it develops. Kind of, Kind of play it by ear. But uh, we will return shortly. Okay, we are back. And it looks like the Shiro Shogunate is already coming in to attack. Um, it's 388 combat power, so I thought it was going to be a relatively small raid. But I was a little incorrect. <clears throat> we got seven people. Let's take a look and see uh, how good these folks are. Uh, bup, bup, bup. Okay, so we got a cannibal. Pretty good at shooting. Okay at melee. Um, Alright, this guy's a coward, so he's probably not going to be too much of a problem. And a bully. <laughs> of course, he's a bully and a coward. No talent. Well, that's pretty on brand for a bully, huh? I guess not all bullies, but pretty on brand for a... Uh, stereotypical bully and like anime and stuff uh let's take a look at this guy 
Tomiko Kano, uh, absolutely terrible at most things. Impatient Cook, a herder, kind and slowpoke. Not super worried about this guy. Actually, has a class. We'll check him out last. Looks like we got a pyromaniac with a uh, pretty high melee skill. Otherwise, not very good. Then we got Nagano, who is an herbalist, a jogger, and prude. Uh, pretty good at plants. Probably try to get them. Uh, oh, looks like we got two people with classes. Okay. So this is an elemental gunner. That sounds pretty frightening. But I don't think they have a gun on them. No, it looks like they got a, a Yari. So we should be okay against this person. I, I don't know if they're going to be an issue, but... If we can get that individual, that would be great. And it looks like uh, this person, a psionic. Oh, God. I've tried the psionic before in this, and it's pretty darn ridiculous. So it looks like we're going to have one hell of a fight on our hands. Um, I was working on this little farmhouse down here. Uh, since we're going to put our fields just kind of like in this area. I figured we have the farmhouse and then maybe like a uh, granary or something of that nature right there. Um, but I suppose what we should do now is get our four people queued up and uh, let's bring them up to this cave. We're going to have to think about how we're going to deal with this. Actually, they have level ups. Let's see, he's got two points. What do we want? I don't think Divine Veil is going to be too helpful because it looks like, for the most part, they're all using Yaris. So, and Divine Veil is good for handling um, projectiles. What about Intervene? Dash is too... Okay, that one's good. Clemency. Okay, a heal would be good. A defensive stance would be good. So let's grab Sentinel and Clemency for now. Um, and then... Oh, we still got magic. Okay. Glacial Heart. Causes a wave of cascading ice energy. Damaging and slowing everything. Okay, that could be very useful. Let's overwhelm. Granting allies brief invulnerability. That could be very useful bulwark blocks most incoming attacks for a brief time okay let's grab that and let's uh oh so we just have those two um he should be set let's take a look at her she's got two points available um <laughs> i don't want to pop into the uh, Blizzagas or anything like that just yet because we want to make sure we got enough mana to handle that. Uh, clarity, that's mana rate recovery. Spirit is base mana gain and mana regen. Focus is decreasing the mana cost of all abilities. So let's take a look. Um, stack of umbral ice what does this do moves all stack of astral fire and grants a stack of umbral ice so it looks like she's more ice oriented uh so we will grab a blizzard one and i think i think a spirit we want some mana gain. That way uh, we have a chance to regain some mana. Okay, for Hylan. Flood of Shadow. Cleaves units behind the initial target. That could be very useful in this instance. Blood Siphon. Absorb their blood, healing themselves. Okay, so it's a very vampire. Plenishing blood and healing scar. Wow. That's insane. Healing scars and permanent injuries? Man. 
That's pretty cool. What about Death Nova? Infuses an organic corpse with dark energy, causing it to just explode after a delay. Okay. Soul Survivor. So it's um, draining a corpse for mana. Interesting. And what does Delirium do? Causing themselves and all nearby creatures to begin hemorrhaging blood? Well, that doesn't sound very conducive. Um, let's do uh, Flood of Shadow 1. And let's hit it with... Let's hit it with a Expanding Darkness. And then for Might... Soul Eater sounds pretty good. Let's check out Shroud of Darkness, though. Consumes <clears throat> nearby energy. C crucial component of the Death Knight's training. Foremost cloak provides a defensive bonus. Okay, so we certainly want that. Okay, so that's the amount of hate increased. <clears throat> let's grab uh let's grab two into the defensive bonuses <clears throat> and then for Solithra honestly you know I, I think I think spirit wolves and we will increase the number of spirit wolves that we summon because we're going to need all the help we can get if they're throwing seven people at us immediately. This is our first raid. Um, and then let's grab Arrow Storm. We'll do a smooth draw. We still got one point left. We'll increase it by one. Okay. So we got all their levels out of the way. <clears throat> we will see um, how overpowered having four hero units versus two hero units and five jobbers will be um this might end up being our uh, makeshift prison <laughs> for the time being all right let's see let's go ahead and move up here Let's see, do we have any cool battle music? We got a lot of battle music. Let's just slap up tent six. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to have Tylera pull up here. We're going to have Cell right here. And we're going to have these two waiting in the wings. Because what I want to do is use the Spirit Wolf. to start our attack. That did not go quite as I wanted it to. Let's hit an arrow storm on this person. Very nice. Into the line for you. Okay. Go ahead and uh, let's pull back a little bit. Okay, so we're gonna pull around this way. Did we even kill anybody? Uh, okay, we got one. One down. How did they go down? Spirit Wolf bit off their toe and they probably died. Okay, yeah, so the Spirit Wolves took her out. Let's move you two down here. For you, let's hit a glacial heart. Um, no, let's do a sword oath. And then let's hit a flood of shadow. What's the range on this thing? Let's hit that person. What are you doing? Oh, okay. You just absolutely massacred that guy. 
Although he's going to bleed out in 22 hours. Do we have enough mana for that? I don't think we do. Based. Oh, it's stamina based. Okay, good to know. Uh, perhaps a blood siphon is in order. Um, bu 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 let's blood siphon Kano. Ragnar, move up. I don't want them attacking our cat. I mean, they're gonna hit the castle, but I don't want them stealing our shit. Bring you two up this way. Highland, what are you doing? I have no idea. Oh, they're gonna start vandalizing our castle. Okay, I mean, that's fine. It's not going to uh, cause us too much of a problem. All right, Ragnar, move out. Let's move this way. See if you can draw. Seriously? Kind of annoying. I don't know why they're all so much faster. Alright, move back. Let's move this way and let's hit a blizzard. Ragnar, move in. Um, okay then. Good to know that that would happen. Highland, can I have you uh, blood siphon this person? Apparently that did not help at all. Okay, go ahead and take out that guy. What? Snowball, Glacial Heart. Okay, well... Now that we know that that uh, is certainly not something you want to do, <laughs> we'll help him out here in a spell. Go ahead and the Bushi party is trying to leave. We got Thundaga? Go ahead and thunder that person. Very nice. All right, go ahead and rescue Ragnar because he kind of overpowered himself. And for you, go ahead and let's take out this guy. Where, where are these fires at? Oh, there's one right there. Nothing's gonna happen. That's annoying. Knock your ass into the next quadrum. Do it. Come on, get him. Get him. Don't let him away. He's gonna die. It's a fight to the death. Alright. And with that... We have fought off our first raid. I did not realize the power of Glacial Heart would be enough to knock himself out. <laughs> That's <laughs> kind of funny. Um, but he doesn't seem to be in any danger of dying. Highland we need to get uh, dealt with. But looks like we're going to go ahead and worry about our name now really quick. We're going to call this Starford Castle. And interestingly enough... As far as a faction name goes, it's kind of a hard call. We're just going to call it Volantis for now. But that could very well change because it depends on who becomes the uh, leader of the colony. Go ahead and stabilize. Let's take a look. So, okay, Ragnar just straight up knocked that guy out. 
Are they any good? Is this one of the good ones? This was the bully. I mean... Not the worst. Definitely, definitely far from the worst potential colonist I've seen. Um... I don't know, this person might not survive. They weren't super great. I am annoyed that we lost our tanning racks, but you know, I'd rather lose tanning racks and toilets as opposed to uh, colonists. So all in all, not a terrible raid. I think we still got one survivor up here mace oh they're the pyromaniac they're gonna bleed out in an hour anyway so that was a pretty simple fight didn't quite go as smoothly as i had hoped because they just kind of bum rushed um bum rushed our people or our castle not our people we need a prison Solithra, we're just going to reacquire your bedroom for the moment. And if I could have you capture this person before you go hunting, that would be great. Highland, you need to go rest before you bleed out to death. Let's take a look. Okay, he should be fine. All right. Ragnar's back up, and if I could have you tend him, awesome. So he's going to re-equip the sword. And then... They bleed out nine hours. We could still potentially save that person. Uh, we want... Furniture, no, I just want a sleeping spot. Alright, if I could have you capture that person before you go use the latrine, that would be great. Highland, how you looking? Oh, you're fine. You lost a lung? Cells, Ranger Arrow, Mist Mia, and Perforated Highland's Right Lung. Ah. We gotta be careful with, uh, with you. You're, you, you are deadly. Packed ice and snow, so it just hits... Hits with a snowball. That's kind of funny. But it counts as an explosion, so... Good to know. Well, that's our first raid. Could have gone way better. Could have gone a lot worse, though. Considering it was four on seven. I'm pretty happy with the... Um, results. Where... Where is... The bully. He is gone. Is he leaving? I don't see him on the map. Huh. Uh, very strange. I might try to keep an eye on that during editing, maybe. All right, can I have you capture Kano for me? And then you can go to the bathroom. All right, well, um, anyway, I will be back.
whenever we have a uh, update. Maybe we'll crack this open. Now I'm not so sure if that's a good idea at this point, but I guess we'll see what happens. So see you back soon. Okay, we are back. This is probably the last segment of this first episode for Ruins and Rim Ponds. We are making Tylera the seer of the ideology. Our ideology is adventurism. I thought it was a fun little play on things. The deities are Balder and Freyr. Um, charity is important, but not required like it is with the new Mandoa, uh, because the main meme is altruism. It made a lot of sense for a non-murder hobo type of party to have that as their uh, main belief. Uh, the leader will be the Night King or Queen, depending on who is the leader. Um, but after some thought and discussion, they do believe that it is probably better for Tylera to not be the Night Queen, even though uh, she is probably the most capable person of handling that role. Mostly because we've already been getting ransacked and raided by the uh, Shiro Shogunate. All they, all they need now is just larger raids or, worse off, Shinji to come after them themselves. Or himself. Um, Shinji is rumored to be now immortal thanks to the uh, work of the blade. The... Uh, sword that he has virtue eater um we also have another war party coming followed by a scout party it looks like so things are already pretty wild these guys will be here really soon um i don't believe this combat power is as high as the last one was i'd have to double check But hopefully we should be okay. We really got to take care of Yoshihide's lake sooner than later. Otherwise, these uh, raids are just going to keep coming and coming and coming. Um, I do not believe this is the capital. In fact, I'm not sure which one of these is the capital for the Shiro Shogunate. I have a feeling that it's this one all the way over here. Because when I was checking the map earlier, it had the highest power in it. Yeah, I'm thinking it might be that one. It doesn't have a little star next to it. Uh, I, th I think Shinji is hiding his location. Where is this guy going? Oh, okay. Um, we probably want to try to make allies with the Exodus Empire or... The uh, Atsuji Shogunate at some point. Otherwise, we're just going to continue to get bombarded over and over again. But we should be expecting them pretty soon. Um, this is coming along nicely. It should be done pretty shortly. And uh, Kano is now a believer in adventurism. As opposed to uh, Neo Annihilation, which is what these guys believe in. Is this person? They do. They literally have one of those little rice holders where you uh, hold two buckets around your shoulder. Let's take a look, see if any of these guys are any good. Poet Bully. Interesting. And beloved neighbors. So they went from a bully to a beloved neighbor. Okay, that's a nice little redemption arc. They're a swordsman. Not a sword master, just a swordsman. Uh, they're pretty good in melee. Looks like we have one person with a class. We'll see what they are in a moment. We also got Shigemoto Nagai who is a cannibal, so that's not going to work for us. They're an Oni bandit. Are they actually an Oni? No. They're, they're just wannabes. <laughs> a wannabe Oni. I do think it's kind of kind of jacked up that they're a gourmand 
and they're a cannibal. It's kind of a messed up combination there. Uh, this person, pretty good at crafting. They're a smith. Very nice. That would be good to get. Iron stomach. And then for this person, they are a samurai, but not the samurai class. So this is probably the leader of this uh, little raiding group. And then Fumio is oh, a ninja. They sent a ninja after us. They're 32. They're a swordsman, animal lover, steadfast, composed. If possible, we should try to get Fumino. I do think that uh, that's a very good uh, set of traits. So are they attacking immediately? They are attacking immediately. All right. So we've learned from the last raid not to use um, Ragnar's <laughs> glacial heart so close to himself. Is that all of them? How many are there? There's six this time. Do we look at this person? Yes. Okay. Hasegawa is probably going to be the first person that we hit. Oh, they're sending a 14-year-old, really? Atsuka, the unlucky twin. Some claim she was adopted by yokai. <laughs> All right, interesting. They're probably going to come down this way. And I expect straight up. So let's pull them here. Solithra right there. Ragnar, if I could have you move here. Highland, where are you? Ah. There is a new door that was supposed to be built. So I guess what we have to do really quick is assign him to deconstructing. Go ahead, deconstruct that. And head here. Sell, let's see. Fumino, we wanna make sure that we do not kill, if possible. Okay, good hit, good hit. Ragnar, let's have you uh, bulwark. Can I have you do a discombobulate? <laughs> do a leg sweep on them. So I'll ha have you move this way. Where are the rest of them? Oh, geez, they're taking forever. Excellent. So they're bleeding out in a few hours. But that's okay. Go ahead, capture. And then Tylera, be ready for a blizzard. I completely missed. Try another one. You're unable to use it? Okay, what about a thunder? Excellent. Highland, I'm going to have you move here. Ragnar, go ahead, head back out. Cell, let's go ahead and uh, we are not ready for spirit wolves. That's okay. Let's go ahead and hit this guy with uh, Arrow Swarm. Jeez. Highland, move up this way. Cell, so move back. Tylera, let's toss a... Oh, man, that's huge. Let's toss another... The guy's really slow, huh? 
toss it right here. Oh, just missed. Okay, blood siphon him. Group of travelers from the Mater Empire. The Tow Mater Empire. Very good. I don't want to use fire. What about... Go ahead and move this way. What are you guys even doing? Man, they're really obsessed with hitting those drying racks. Hello, Shadow. Go ahead and... <clears throat> go ahead and do that there. Rather, not, Hopefully the, it doesn't kill the young one, but... Hit it. Oh, nice. Ragnar, if I could have you move up. This direction. Tyler, oh god. Go ahead and... How's she doing? Not terribly. We'll have to uh, heal her up. Go ahead and get that guy. Very good. How's this looking down here? Highlands holding fast. Go ahead and do a barbed arrow on the guy. Okay, Hasagawa is dead. Ragnar, go ahead and move in and uh, finish him off. You can go ahead and go. I think I think we're good. All right, there we go. So all in all, not too bad. Uh, looks like Tylera took some damage. Let's go ahead and preach health. Can't she preach health on herself? I guess not. Let's go ahead and um. Can you tend to self with medicine? Very good. Very good. Okay. Oh, friendly. So that uh, scouting party was a friendly group. What do they have? What are these? Elephant spears. Okay. Is that an elephant bow? These look really cool. Yep, elephant bow. Elephant spears and elephant bows. Must be tribals. Uh, and then up here we got these two guys. We got an orc. A pair of orcs. Gadrol Doom Slicer. What a name. So it looks like we did pretty well on the second raid. Much better, I think, this time around than the first time. Uh, we probably definitely want to look at getting some defenses going. More so than what we have, because right now we're just kind of fighting people in the fields, which only works for so long. Um, prisoner, we want to convert then recruit. I'm not overly concerned about grabbing this guy because that's the cannibal. Was this the smith? No, it was not the smith. I think the smith is dead. Ooh. Lightning. So their right leg got cut off. Cells projectile. Okay, so... That arrow hit them so hard that their leg came off. I'm telling you, Solithra has probably so far been the most deadly person in this colony. Mostly because uh, I think the bow and arrow she has is pretty good. But 
Anyway, we'll go ahead and end the uh, video here tonight. Hopefully this was a good first episode and everybody enjoyed. Um, one last thing, there is a public Discord that I've set up. The link to that will be in the description. It will be in the description of all my videos moving forward. Um, so if you feel the need to, you know, want to talk to me, I am me or whatever, that's the place to do it. So at any rate, thank you all for watching, and we will see you in the next episode. Goodbye.